Ben, please let me. Thank you very much. I'm chastened by this introduction, um, which on one hand um, makes me realize that I will make very few remarks about these poems because we'll only be babbling <laughs> after hearing that, um, but also feeling that I've been understood and, and, and which is a gift, so I feel already rewarded. Uh, I thank John for inviting me and I'm also very grateful to Kelly for persevering through my lapses of communication in arranging this. I'm going to read primarily from two books, um, from the 100 Etudes that John talked about and from work that will come out soon, I hope, The Theory of This Particular Wednesday. And I think the differences between these books will be um, quite evident orally. And um, I won't say more, more about them, though, um, having heard <laughs> John's remarks. Um, yeah, I think it will be self-evident. But I'll, I'll, let me begin with an older poem that it came to mind to me to read today because of uh, seeing a headline from The Guardian on Facebook. First gray wolf seen at Grand Canyon in 70 years killed by Utah hunter. So it brought back this poem to mind. History lesson. Romulus and Remus were suckled by the teats of those who tore Diana's throat when she was swift of feet. And from them rose a state so strong it wrung the very neck of every whelp whose tender thought forbade him to forget that man is but a wolf to man who's wolf to wolf indeed who kills the mother of his wealth and starves amid the feed. Fort Da. A storm 300 miles away interrupts the melody of two intersecting signals. Two birds delimiting the sky atop the sun-crushed peaks of snow, the dead air swallowing up, their voices reaching from below. Stunned by forms of linear constraint, submerged in elemental reasoning, the radio station marks us out of range. The mind is a bubble sheet. This is my tribute to Marianne Moore, who is my favorite modernist, the one from whom I most continuously learn. The mind is a bubble sheet, a thought balloon or soap bubble, indistinct picture. It reveals nothing but our own confusion. Squinting, seeing, the mindful man or woman finds a penny, heads, and picks it up. Thus chance gives necessity body, a burning pain, a flickering memory, a hobbled step to the door which is locked. Bewildered or stunned silence, it falls asleep, wakes again, crashes, is restored. An answering machine that cuts off the crucial word, the mind, hearing a distant sound becomes a joint controlling movement, tight, like a smile freely dispensed with liquor, the mind, a decimal point that magnifies experience, a liquid controlled by knowable laws. It has capacity and gives it. Like salt dissolved in water, its forgotten thought can still give taste. Denture, spectacle, phantom pain. It supplies the body with what it needs or doesn't need but stupidly wants an automatic rehearsal of things going round and round, a mute ant lifting a leaf, the leaf itself, a captured flag gained for pride, but held without respect. I 
have the very dry mouth that comes from being in a hotel room. The ventilation in such places reminds me of nursing homes, which I've spent some time in, as you will hear. Through a glass. Divine shapes drawn from light, like a splinter from an eye. They speak, shielding the glare, their high heads aloft in the clouds, in the crowd, seeming to see furred colors, living shapes. The tiniest spiders march across the day. Quivical mountains, the clouds, mass triumphantly, blow north. Where feelings have a railing, but the stairs are gone, I see the glory of a distance attended by stars. Dedication. If it's trampled, it's a heart. If it rises up, it beats your voice into a grave matter of print. Love requires no language, but accepts it in stone. Teeth, scattered like seeds, planting a question, why? No answer comes knocking. Only men in uniform, like you, bearing a flag. This is a sequence of short, shorter poems um, gathered together under the title, Nothing Remains Save All History Allows, which is for Anne Boyer. Legend. Mouth in me muse, as Helen Keller's teacher might, by nimble hand, somebody else's words. Screensaver or duty roster, fleshed out skeleton key buried out of earshot of the living memory of X, Y, Z. Handmade letters litter the meaning, leaving the song intact. Only currency endures. <clears throat> and yet erosion shapes the course, carrying price beyond reach. Watching, we endure the stench of the dead weight of profit wasting away. America. From bended knee to wounded smile in drag, plentiful as the folds of a dress, the surplus embryo of a nascent idea frozen in time. Congealed labor. At the feet of a bank, of a river of gold flowing vertically from ranks of clerical workers to the managing general partner up above, the edifice of money merely redirects the shine around a shadow of my <coughs> former self. Light flows, leaving black ink behind, but never enough. Coinage. Intellect is a hard currency that jangles happily in pursed lips. Alienation. Imprisoned in a book used for pillow by a head dreaming of things kept out of consciousness, an untrained, nameless urge buried in a windowed envelope. It must be methodical, must be a strict translation of sounds, threading intimations through an eye so narrow, light misses the mark. Wartime economy. For shame of a whimper, the dog kneeled. His heart died, but its master lived on, liquefied and inexact moving and eroding organ transplanted from continent to continent. Worker. True to type, the blind leading the blind talk to the hand because the face isn't listening. Assaulted by quick frequencies of color, work is a poem learned by heart and forgotten, contained like a meaning yet containing none the deep end of a tight pocket, a password-protected brain function written to disk. Sequela, or sequela. <laughs> <laughs> a 
A quickly scribbled thought denting every subsequent record presses into the mind, which never evens. Consciousness is wadded. A book dropped in water, expanding under the sun, is still readable, though its stiff, warped pages turn awkwardly. And one other sequence gathered under the title Phenomenologies. This is for Rod Smith. Forgotten upon waking. Hilted memory takes a thrust and pulls away the hand, which then relaxes, dropping the matter altogether. Deja vu. I will say that deja vu is the most painful experience that I know. Um, and it's the reason that I do not do drugs. <laughs> um, one of the few times that I got high, I entered a state of permanent deja vu, where every gesture I would try to do is, oh, it's the same one. Oh, it's the same one. And I began to feel very trapped in every gesture that I could perform. And honestly, I can conjure that feeling even now um, by moving in certain ways and, and, and thinking about this experience. Um, I think that this must be the source of Philip K. Dick's imagination. Deja vu. Sliding out of view, memory glimpses back at us like an eye staring into a head from which it fixes a view in the other direction, impossibly. Self-recrimination. It all makes so much sense and hurts too clearly in the wrong place a sewing needle drawn through its own eye, tightening the logic. Therapy. A curdled muscle drops a foot in a clump on the unfeeling floor. Sensate, voiceless, hard as wood, muddled as thought, scraped into consciousness by a glacier of calcified will. Friday night. All our language frazzled to a cloud of intuition, wetted on the lip of a rusty knife's blunt edge of an understanding tongue that cuts our loss. Optimism. Draining the glass, halved, then emptied of meaning, consciousness is unbecomingly drunk on hope. Voice. Sound constitutes this world whose changes make song excite sense. Memory, a spindle willing it all around us again in slow revolution. Identity. Little by little enough recompense for what suspends judgment eases memory. The self is a three-dimensional object without obverse, modeled from life. Diurnal. Powders in a puddle, in a jar, seep down slowly, changing color as we look out, seeing the light fall behind, giving way to dust, hiding the sunset inside us. This is indeed winter in Maine. Parapraxis. A spoken word has no real direction, wriggling every which way to escape capture, in every head a trap, a rat tail torn away in a bloody mouth. Reason. Walking on eggshell-like ridges of hardened slush, the active mind feels heavy, crushing the very thought supporting its progress. Paradise. Using the same shaded meanings, a tree fails to raise in anger against the sun. Creation becomes an argument against the God who established its limits. For all that is, is because it cannot trespass upon nothing, ignorance of which was bliss once upon a time. Painful to fall silent at brink of knowledge, learn nothing and lose hope. 
A rope burns our hands when we slide away from its knitted telos. And the last from the Etudes. Statement of principle for Benjamin Hollander. We who experience history as an intergenerational effect develop symptoms of other people's memories, then fend off an embarrassment of riches of distress. For less is always more of the same old shit, knowledge for which one has no words, only self-destructive actions that feel good but bear no future scrutiny. An accent is made by the listener. I can see by the look on your face that your hearing is less adapted to English than my wife's speech. But that doesn't surprise me. I've read your poetry. It speaks poorly of today's forum of non-refundable deposits of fat in the tongue. Developmental plasticity eats away at wealth of vowel sounds and proper names in English. We say red book, also a book read. Why not? Is word order so hard that even a face must accept its defeat? The stink is snuffed out by air that can't carry the whiff of a tune. She sings, and fools stop listening, thinking they hear mere music. Ballad of the Yellow Poet. Today I am a sour taste in the moth of a polypo, a water-based paint designed by one person to depict the killing of two railroad workers. I am a sour candy created from a variety of oral fixations with an emphasis on Dawson's. Once I was a rotten tomato with backspin thrown into a spoiler warning with incidents of almost Yatesian barminess and apologies to Broadway. But today, I am one of those aging Jewish patriarchs who wrote Bang the Drum Slowly, had a Chinaman's chance encounter with a white man's chance of getting his ass kicked from the corner in the final minute of regulation. It was very woo-woo, a very new agey kind of thing in the Ezra Pound sense, ethically disoriented, a slurred passage to you, to mastership of you, strewed with the wrecks of lemon, of glances in mirrors that reflect badly on yellow, who especially dislikes the Pokemon battles. She protects her energy balls in this frantic, sorry, the game of sweet revenge, cannot bring herself to hurt one of the warm colors often used for hazard signs. Me, a cowardly lion of Judah in the Emerald City, looking for vapors of mothballs in a pocket of gentrified San Francisco. The extraordinary action of the human foreskin is not for me. I am a boiled octopus and will spare you the nasty work of sloughing off the umbilical stump of Western style. This poem was a work of self-critique um, after much online discussion about Asian American, anti-Asian American prejudices in Flarf poetry that I was associated with at that time. So I was trying to think through some of that material. And um, in general, that work and the work I'm going to read now is, I guess, for me, the inverse of the constraint-based work in the sense that instead of subjecting my thought to scrutiny one word at a time, painfully so, to fit them into a box um, and make sure they fit, I let go and tried to see what would develop and whether I could exercise any control on it. But primarily, it was letting go rather than constraint. And in the poems that I'm going to read now, my sense of this dialectic between constraint and letting go underwent some revision in a way that I've found productive for my, for my growth as a human, <laughs> but not for my poetry. <laughs> One has to make choices. When my father was in a nursing home, 
and I began to see um, letting go as loss of control in the sense of end, end of life and to think of constraint in terms of caregiving. And so moving away from the poetics language of constraint and freedom to caregiving and loss of control. Um, yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> the poverty of philosophy. Poor people do dominate the first round, but they fall away later. I knew a few once. We were in a pilot program called Thought. It busts a move in a covered entity, imagination, which acquires more meaning the less truth and vice versa. Truth stands above and beyond money, if money is no object, as the rich people say. It's rich, isn't it? busted with a six pack in their bag when coming from Philly isn't worth the effort. But then what? Nutrition? Turning coal into gas lets the flow loose and soils the middle. Yes, maybe the wording is clumsy, but you know what imagination is good for? Localized gastroesophageal cancer in a box, a pine box. Anchor baby. Remember the oval window, a membrane covered opening which leads from the middle ear to the vestibule where a portrait hangs of a young girl just ripening into mud. Some people say she is our hope for the future, red in the face with or without makeup. But it's better than being dark and ugly like a bronchial tree where birds are crying in the smoke. Listen, if you breathe through a straw, you might just make it over the border. I mean, without having to stop and get out of your body. Coyote showed us and drove all day and came back at night to the same place for another load. I read this in the police blotter with the birth announcements. And did you know also that newborn babies are thick almost as thick as roofing tar with sand in it. And there's a baby in the sand? Wow. Reminds me of that Chicago couple found buried alive under trash. That's their daughter over there watching me watch you drag off Jess's pup. She looks heavy in the belly and exhausted, sliding down the side of a mountain. As soon as the sun comes up, we can ask her to show us the road. Her man was trapped and sent home, but she can still raise the child because of the blood lying on the ground with a coyote on top of her kind of scared. So I ran off into the mud, scum queen. Then they released her hand, the baby all covered with pitch. She was trying to bite it off, but her face was the same way, a storm drain where leaves and debris amass, waiting for collection a barred window in the ground, and all the world below a jail, or series of jails, one inside the other. Hence, all the guards are actually inmates? Yeah, it's just the pay scale that varies. Also naming rights. For instance, the only white man in an otherwise all Hispanic cleaning crew is expecting a call to release the algae, which we can anchor to the ocean floor. The dredging costs are rising, but the algae will stay. We can then hire someone off the books to maintain the pool. If they behave, we'll let their kids swim after closing hours. We never close, but don't forget to check ID. I wish I had the skill to read these poems with the rage that I feel them. <laughs> Wednesday's Child. This phrase that I worked under, the theory of this particular Wednesday, I took it as we take so many good things from Emerson, um, who called for a philosophy that could give a theory of this particular Wednesday and forget about the ancient civilizations. And I am not that philosopher, but um, I like to toil in its shadows. 
Wednesday's child. You are as old as you feel ignorant again. Congenital woe kept her in PJs all day, went back to the menu. She wants it with syrup. Grandmother's taste buds went along with her teeth. Okay, do old people smell bad? No, your system properly boogered makes it through hump day, has far to go. So they sent an orthopedic surgeon to look at her spine. Yes, a nurse's life is full of innuendo. About suffering, they were never wrong, the old gals. They sat on their very rounded bottoms and rolled like thunder is just a noise. Lightning does the work. Grace is on the way. Wait, that's Tuesday. Tomorrow is PTOT. Will not bring back sensations that you have lost in the flood. Grandma, can you make an O face? Here's what I think about the focus on fear. I mean family. She is death warmed over, a grim looking dark haired little girl. She had a close relationship with the butler. After the children were split up, she got lost in the system. Hungry yet? The nurse prescribed a cream soup spilled on her day clothes, put a smile on her face of this almost 80, come on, just two more bites, then dessert. In my father's speech therapy, I learned how much of language is, is um, involved in, in the ability to swallow. That swallowing is really at the core of our ability to speak. And I'm still processing uh, the implications of this. The dream of a common language. I'm sorry. I'm out of breath from climbing in pitch. Could you repeat that? The daughter, who is bilingual, translates between parents. Question, does there have to be a sound for a language to be considered speech therapy is working on breathing? The O in boat, the A in bass, like mmm. I love how that sounds. I give my body in all modesty behind a veil that you can lift like an embargo. I had this weird moment today when I couldn't remember the meaning of pimpin'. I still don't think I fully understand the apostrophe. I think that missing it is the whole point of this linguistic downturn coincides with the end of an era of high return on expanding borders. Someone is in some sort of trouble or difficulty trying to explain to a party they overpaid. They are leaving without their money. Good riddance. Shibboleth. My friend and I were debating over how I think it's Kesha, but she thinks Keisha. Tick-tock. The hours when you are with me are dark and the air is cool. Our words are light and warm, or vice versa. Listening to the sound of, my God, this thick German accent reminds me of my dad. The Hyundai accent offers advanced safety technologies. I'm from the Midwest. We pronounce it Hyundai. I say it's Hyundai. If you are from Korea, it's Hyundai. And I'm sure I botched each one of those accents. <laughs> Bedside gathering. His nails grew longer as we waited for the swelling, and yet his speech shrank down to a near nothing of a possible machine reading air quality. A human brain, they say, has the interior structure of a thoughtful child stuck in its writing. The melody of a heart racing thick as the air in a car on a hot day. When the windows are pulled up, lock the vehicle. Place the keys in your pocket. Insert a finger into the clamp. He is old pennies worth anything? Does anyone collect them? When it comes to cleaning, you may be surprised at how old you feel. Watching a pathetic hanger on to youth, you keep breathing. 
but the air becomes recalcitrant. Secretions pool, so a nurse comes and scrapes the bottom. Her advanced age management techniques become a risk factor, is a number that divides evenly into another number, 80 in September, 51 in March. You see, life is a math game, not a puzzle. In a puzzle, the outcome is predetermined and fixed. It's the difference between creating your own solution and discovering the designer's desktop manual for developing and implementing time rations. Shift to private pay. Your will should be clear and succinct purpose for existence. Incorporate socially meaningful expectations of growth and possibility of breathing on our own time, which passes slowly enough to stop, but doesn't. Organ failure. Think of a word in its ideal form as a canary in the mind, which is a public space. For instance, reception areas in hospitals require identification. I am detached from their moment of truth. I live in falsity by design. I didn't catch that. Can you say it again? The vowel edge should touch the target at all times when the breathing is steady, achieving a certain rhythm. Now make sure that when you practice chewing, you allow 24 hours. I have goosebumps when I hear Nye trill down the hall. The residents pretend they can't, can't understand their own names become strange. Surrounded by others who speak with one voice, they are loud, but not clear on their roles. Don't be ashamed. Women stoop and men shuffle. This protects the vital organs, are not effeminate, only brutal in their arrogance. They drive sounds too deep, a sponge of human tissue thick with toxin. I am pretty sure I saw people choking others with belts, shedding the lining, not in speech, but in little splotches of color that flood your memory. Swallowing involves deliberately conditioning your body to do something its defense mechanisms prohibit. So it's not surprising that the sick become neurotic and nervous, choking off the leak that has already poisoned so many relationships. There is a gulf between generations. What they manage to pump keeps them alive long enough to say, I love you. Guilt is a heavy burden. Are there any scholars in the audience? I'll give them a buck if they can tell me what Sisyphus did to deserve all that exercise. No, don't answer. I really don't care to live in a world where skilled workers can't gain a safe harbor. It's not rocket science. Kiss me, I'm German is a research agenda, like Germany itself. More experimental than theoretical, it borders on insanity. My Großvater war da geboren in Posen which isn't to say the future is out of his hands. Dripping with oil, we fumbled the message, found friends, shared photos, kept in touch. Funding opportunities follow Kantian themes into third world debt. Von Braun at Roswell built this city on shock and awe. Total war. Don't get me started on the Euro. I was cursed to watch an entire year of Angela Merkel's childhood only to realize I'd seen it before. Gone totally off the reservation, like Winnetou or Shatterhand, she risks marginalizing Sisyphus, went rogue, with his mouth wide open, and tiny bits of Haitian debris poured down his throat. He pushed back their words. He was full of rage at his leaders. He had a problem with guilt, is a heavy burden. 
Just ask Atlas. He could have rolled back the stone years ago and let Jesus go, but his fatherland asked otherwise, so he fought the light saber snowtroopers chasing a dog in a tight circle. To dispose of a tick, place it in alcohol, and or flush the project donkey. It carries the weight of a thousand year Reich. Though the expiration passed like a kidney stone years ago, my father was there, but he can't tell you anything. He lost the power of speech. And this is the last poem. Pater Noster. Call it a lump of coal in a stocking or deity. It doesn't matter. Sentience is beside the point. Matter is a rude awakening from a sleep that few believe in. Is it sleep when the ground gets hard in winter and nothing grows? The days get shorter. The brain keeps warm like a dying sun. I believe that something exists and always has and always will. It expands and contracts under care from a nurse who monitors the family and alleviates the shame of disbelief. Hi, my name is Ben and I'm 55 and I can't control my behavior anymore. I create reality in a urine bag sent for testing and people participate and I let them without interference breathe through a hole at the far end of a tube looking back at me absorbing light. Then birds come and drop contaminants and rainwater gathers in yellow pools. Even gods decline in health when they're depressed, let down, or in some way deprived of what they really need. Turned every two hours, they still develop sores, maintain a complex argument with sentience, is infinite, shatters my understanding, leaving me to wonder why anything exists at all. Thank you.